Just to let everybody know before we get started, uh, we do have uh, the chat room open. Uh, you're, you're more than welcome to just go in there and uh, enter any questions you might have. Uh, we'll have some people uh, monitoring those during the presentation. Uh, I will have everybody's microphone muted uh, during the presentation just to, to give us uh, you know, less audio feedback during the presentation. So hello everyone, it's 11 uh, a.m. here in uh, beautiful Southern California. And uh, uh, my name is Larry Sharp. I'm one of the application engineers here at Chroma System Solutions. And we are going to be covering power measurements uh, and how we achieve accuracy, some of the test requirements, some of the standards today. And then we'll go into a, a good uh, overview of our product and uh, that we offer in our digital power meters. So again, uh, my name is Larry Sharp. We have the chat room open. Please feel free to jump in there with any, uh, any kind of questions you might have. We've got some extra people out there uh, manning the chat room today that'll give me a lot of support. So uh, I'm gonna go ahead and get started. By the way, I, again, you know, I want to thank everybody for joining us. Uh, I know it's difficult time right now for everyone. We're all in the same boat. Uh, some of you are working from home. Some of you are working, you know, out, in and out of the office uh, or even on the road, I see. But um, we appreciate the time that you take to join us, and we hope we can give you some support and good information. And I hope everybody's well and uh, doing good during this time and uh, that you're all uh, not going stir crazy being uh, uh, locked up in your homes, but uh, uh, be safe, uh, be kind to one another and, uh, and we're gonna get through this. Uh, looking forward to when things get a little more normal, uh, but in the meantime, it's great joining you online like this. So thank everyone, uh, I really appreciate it. So the, um, the Chroma presentation that I'm gonna be giving today is gonna start off uh, like I usually do uh, with kind of an overview of the entire product line that Chroma offers. Uh, we have some of the most amazing uh, test equipment used specifically for power conversion devices. Uh, we offer an incredible line of AC's power sources, uh, with regenerative grid simulators, our DC power supplies, AC and DC electronic loads, and of course, power meters that I'm gonna cover today. But we also, a lot of people don't realize it, have an incredible line of electrical safety test equipment, high pot testers, impulse winding testers, uh, test advanced testers, uh, com combinational safety testers. We also have a variety of uh, passive component testers, LCR meters. We have an uh, incredible line of battery cyclers and simulators. And then we can of course have a, a great group of people here that combine all of these devices into an automated test system. Uh, we've got probably one of the best groups of, of automated test engineers in the business and they're right here in the building with me. And I, uh, I appreciate their support. They give me a lot of help. So today we're gonna to be covering a little bit about standards and tests to, to understand why we need these power meters and what they need to do. And then we're gonna get into our 66200 family of digital power meters and their key features. So the standards. Standards are, are generated for the purpose of making sure that whoever's meters or whoever's doing the test, because there's a wide variety of people out there doing power testing, uh, are, are compatible uh, and meet the requirements uh, of the different agencies and departments and, and uh, uh, groups out there that, that define these, these standards so that we do the same testing. So some of those, just to give you a rundown, the Department of Energy, the DOE, the Environmental Protection Agency, uh, presently they kind of share what we refer to as the Energy Star. Uh, there's also the IEC, the International Electrotechnical Commission. They do a great job with uh, global types of standards 
uh, related to uh, power measurements. And then there's the uh, American National Standard Institute, the RTCA for aeronautics. So there's, uh, and this is by no means the full list. So there's, there's an incredible group out there of uh, engineers working very hard to make sure that we all do the same tests, that our tests are compatible, and that we have a well-defined method of tests. So the two things that pop up most often when we're do, talking about power measurements are EMI, EMC testing and energy efficiency. And I'm sure any of you working in, the, in any power related uh, industry know very well how stringent we're getting on energy efficiency and also on EMI, EMC, EMC testing. And, um, and also all of the utility companies out there uh, you know, they've worked well with these agencies to develop what protects our grid, prevents us from putting too much uh, uh, distortion out there, and, uh, and also not affect other people that are plugging into the grid. So when we do these tests, we are testing a wide variety of products, just about anything that plugs into the grid. Anything getting its power from the utility companies uh, is subject to some type of testing and is generally covered by one of these or both of these types of tests. So one, two, two types of standards that have, uh, have appeared over the years that uh, define what test specifications and methodology of the test to, uh, to make sure that everybody's using the same type of measurements when they use their test equipment are the IEC 62301. It describes uh, not only the methodology of the test of the power meter, but also its accuracy and its stability. IEC 6000-61000 uh, typo there, dash four, dash seven. Uh, it really covers mostly the harmonic distortion testing and how we accumulate harmonic distortion measurements uh, when we sum it for total harmonic distortion for voltage and for current. And the nice thing about it is we meet all those requirements with the Chromas 66,000 family of power meters. So just to give you a, a brief idea uh, how many different devices out there are covered by some of these, the Department of Energy has these various lists on their website. I left the, uh, the link there if you wanna look them up. But uh, I, I just found with consumer products, commercial and industrial and lighting, you know, there's over 60 different family of products and with each of those products there's sub categories as well. So you can see the enormous number of products that need to be tested. And this by no means is a complete list. Uh, so please feel free to go on the DOE uh, under energy.gov and uh, you'll find some incredible information there. Uh, they're doing a great job keeping us updated. So the 162301 IEC standard, its main purpose is uh, to ensure that everybody uses the same measurements, that the measurement devices meets this criteria when measuring things such as energy consumption, uh, standby and low power modes as well. So they're defined it at a particular temperature so that everybody makes their measurements in the same type of environment. Uh, they also make sure that the power being supplied to the device under test has to meet a very low level of harmonic distortion so that we're not injecting a, a larger issue into the device. And they've defined that to be less than 2% of uh, and up to the 13th order when it comes to harmonic distortion. Also, they, they want to make sure that the device, that the crest factor for voltage and for current meets the uh, range between 1.34 to 1.49. Standard, you know, sine wave uh, is normally 1.414. So the accuracy also is important. So when you have power meters that uh, require this type of accuracy, uh, they're defined here very well in 62301. 
0.01 watts or less uh, resolution when you're working under 10 watts and uh, 0.1 watts all the way up to, uh, to uh, devices up to 100 watts. There's other standards that go above 100 watts. Uh, if you want more information on those, you know, let us know. We'll, we'll try to update you on those as well. The other thing that they talk about is uh, confidence level and uncertainty, and that's very low. Uh, anything above a half a watt requires that it have less than 2% uncertainty at 95% confidence level. For you that don't understand or haven't heard of this before, this is a test that's performed over a number of different measurements over time, and then they look to see that they stay within their accuracy uh, based on this level of testing and that the confidence level is that if you ran uh, multiple tests over time, that there would be a confidence of 95% that they would always fall within that certain level of accuracy. The other thing about this is the measurement procedure itself. There's, uh, there's ways of doing the measurement, 5% variation, five minute test times, uh, accurate measurement of the power consumption, uh, under various conditions. And again, there's more detail in the actual procedure. So if you would like more information on that, uh, the IEC 62301 procedure uh, is available online uh, out there uh, if you wanna purchase the 62301 standards. The IEC 61000-4-7 is, uh, is actually uh, incorporated into the IEC 61000-3-2, which is the EMI EMC testing uh, for almost any device that plugs into the grid. And this is uh, very specific on how harmonics are measured and inner harmonics are measured and how that information is combined into total harmonic distortion. Uh, and for voltage and for current, and also for individual measurements of harmonic uh, distortion. So there's a lot more information on this standard. Uh, this is just the scope of it, but I wanted to let you know what it is, what it's for, and let you know that our 66200 family of, of power meters meet these requirements. So I'm gonna get into the actual power meter, and uh, we have, in our lineup of power meters, we have the 66205, 204, and 203. Uh, they range from a single channel up to a four channel uh, power meter. They measure everything uh, required from RMS voltage, RMS current, peak voltages, peak currents, harmonic voltage, harmonic current, total harmonic voltage and current, crest factor for voltage, crest factor for current, even surge current capability for measurements, uh, frequency for voltage and for current, which is unusual. Not all power meters measure uh, individually frequency and current, uh, frequency for voltage and current. We also measure true power, apparent power, reactive power, power factor, uh, ampere hours, watt hours, and we can measure degree as well, which we'll talk about that when we get into the harmonics a little more. One of the key features about this particular power meter is the wide range of voltages and currents. And the accuracy of each of those ranges is, uh, you know, the accuracy is based on the range that you're in. So you'll find on any power meter, when they specify accuracy, they also specify a factor based on the range. So being able to have this many different ranges going from 30 amps on the internal shunt all the way down to five milliamps on current and giving you resolution and accuracy down to 50 microamps uh, is, is pretty incredible. So our units uh, meet or exceed the requirements and they also are uh, meet or exceed uh, most of our competitors uh, range of, of uh, current and voltages. You can also use external shunts uh, to increase the, the current measurements uh, because it is a five uh, digit uh, display and power measurement, you can get all the way up to uh, 99,999 uh, measurement if you need it by using external shunts or current transformers. We'll talk about that a little bit more too. DC to 10 kilohertz frequency range 
and power uh, measurements all the way down accurately into the 75 milliwatt range, all the way up to 18 kilowatts using uh, this uh, up to 60 different ranges. Unit uh, comes standard with USB GPIB RS-232 interfaces. Great for uh, programmability. It has a full uh, complement of SCPI commands. We have LabVIEW drivers for it as well. We also have some great software, which we'll be showing you in just a moment. Optional, it has Ethernet or LAN. Uh, if you need that, uh, that also is available. Specs on the unit uh, are some of the best in the industry uh, for voltage, current, and power. Uh, as we mentioned, the range of power is 75 milliwatts all the way up to 18 kilowatts. Uh, accuracy down to 0.1% uh, of the reading at a plus 0.05% of the range you're in. So incredible power accuracy measurements uh, combined with the voltage and current measurements for this device. The features that make this unit above and beyond a normal, typical uh, power meter in the price range that we're in uh, are things that our R&D group have done a great job in developing and adding to our power meters. One of those things is referred to as continuous measurement accuracy. Uh, a lot of power meters, when they're doing updates, uh, when you're taking continuous readings, they actually have an update rate. It's the time it takes for uh, information to be updated into and uh, displayed out to uh, the front display or fed out to the uh, interface. So when you look at this, uh, Chroma has come up with what's referred to as a gapless continuous moving window. Normally the update rate during that period of time, you're not getting measurements. And if you're averaging over that period of time, you're going to lose data and it's going to cause some inaccuracies. With Chroma, we have a continuous moving window that's continuously updating and measuring. So you don't have that delayed update rate. And because of that, your measurements are more accurate and your measurements are much more stable and uh, you get much better readings overall. Something along that same kind of line is what we refer to as our smart range. Another problem with a lot of meters out there on the market today is auto ranging. Uh, a lot of them have the capability to do auto ranging. And when your device is uh, dynamically loaded and it's moving between multiple ranges, uh, you're actually losing data. Your data is being lost during that transition period from one range to the other. And also your accuracy changes when it goes from one range to the other because of the factor that all accuracies are based on the range that you're in. So Chromas came up with a smart range integration function that prevents that from happening. So with the 66205s, with the smart range measurement capability, there's no data loss during transition and ranges and there's no uh, and there's no clamping off of the uh, during the time that it switches from one range to another so it makes a great way to ensure uh, again things such as that 95 percent uh, confidence level uh, when you're making measurements over a long period of time uh, accuracy and confidence level are, are key to meeting the standards that we just spoke about Inrush current measurement, uh, this is great for our units. We can do uh, inrush current measurements at different time levels, different windows of time. We can even do a delayed uh, response to when we start the window to measure the uh, continuous measurement for peak current. And um, with that, we can also do a level setting trigger, which means you can say, when the inrush current is above a particular current, uh, trigger the uh, trigger the inrush current test. So also you can do it with a TTL signal externally. Uh, you can sit. You also can do it from the software or manually by just pressing the button on the front of the unit. Uh, we have a great general user interface stores the settings, captures the measurements, and we can even do graphical display, which we'll get into in a little later in, in the presentation. An IEC 
too for harmonic measurements. Uh, one of the things they recommend is a 5.5 kilohertz uh, cutoff level uh, for uh, when you're doing your harmonic measurements. Uh, Chroma took that information, incorporated into our uh, digital power meters, and we've came up with two set points of 500 hertz and a 5.5 kilohertz uh, digital filter that has a very high attenuation rate. Uh, the attenuation rate is greater than 70 dB. So uh, with that, you can do confident measurements all the way up to the 50th, 60th harmonic. Basically, any harmonic below the 90th order, uh, you can use this 5.5 kilohertz uh, uh, filter, and it will give you great information and test measurements uh, uh, without being corrupted by the some of the higher frequency content that might be generated by your device under test. Harmonic measurements, we're going to talk a lot about that. Uh, manually on the front of the unit, one of the key things is that uh, the display allows you not only to measure the total harmonic distortion for voltage and current, but it also allows you to measure each individual harmonic or each order of harmonic. And uh, it even allows you, it, it starts with the first uh, fundamental uh, frequency measurement for voltage or current. And then it goes from there, you can enter uh, which harmonic you want to measure. In this case, we did a little quick test for you. The, uh, the blue screens on the right-hand side there, that's, uh, that's the programming screen on my AC sources. Uh, Chroma's AC sources have the ability to uh, create uh, synthesized waveforms to include harmonic distortion very accurately. And here I've programmed in uh, the third harmonic uh, with a 10% um, uh, range of a uh, 10% of the uh, standard RMS voltage of the fundamental uh, frequency. And from there, we've added even a 30 degree phase shift between the harmonic versus the fundamental frequency. And this is another requirement that you're going to find in some things like, like uh, IEC 61000-4-7 measurements. So here you can see on the display below, uh, these are the actual uh, displays of the test that we ran. Shows the first order at 220 volts. Uh, shows the third uh, order measuring 22.06 volts, 10% uh, of the of the RMS value of the of the main voltage at the fundamental level, and then it shows the uh, the degree of that particular voltage with respect to the fundamental voltage, which is 29.979. We had set it to 30 degrees. Uh, you're not going to find much better accuracy than that when you're controlling uh, harmonics and phase shift of the harmonics. So uh, I, th I think I've gone overboard on uh, harmonic measurement functions, but uh, another thing that we just wanted to highlight is when we're doing these tests, uh, we meet the requirements of the IEC 61000-4-7. There's uh, a lot of information requiring that you do uh, total harmonic distortion measurements, the way you sum the measurements uh, for each of the harmonics, the way you isolate the harmonics and and again, sum those together to create the total harmonic distortion for voltage and for current. And uh, on the right here is just kind of a block diagram that talks about that a little bit, uh, the summing function as well as what we refer to as a smoothing feature uh, and the way that we check uh, for compliance before we output the data. So we can do that very well with our soft panel. Uh, we refer to it as a soft panel. It's a most people think of it as a general user interface. Uh, that's this uh, block here that I'm showing on the left side of the screen. And what this is, is this is um, a National uh, Instruments LabVIEW standalone executable software package that we offer. And this is just one of many screens that you can access uh, with this particular soft panel. But this one is for harmonic measurements. And it also includes the regulation limits for IEC 61000-3-2. So graphically, the, uh, the yellow uh, boxes that you see on the chart 
show those actual limits based on that standard. And then the red is actual measurements that we're running as we run the test. In the, uh, in the middle there, you'll see uh, the raw data uh, and you can scroll up and down to view all the raw data as you're running the test. Uh, you can graphically display voltage or current. Uh, you can display it in uh, voltage or uh, current or percentage. And you can also put in test limits, uh, just like you do for the IEC 61000-3-2. And here you can see the unit we're testing past both voltage and current uh, for uh, the standard. Another way this unit is used, uh, the little digital power meter. First of all, this little meter, I use it all the time. <laughs> it's, it's one of my favorites. It's small, it's lightweight, uh, easy to carry around. Uh, I take it with me when I go visit customers usually. And, and the other th advantage to this unit is just the wide range capability of measurements it can do. One of those things is with the external current transformers or shunts. And typically when you add in a current transformer or a shunt, uh, you have to add in the uh, accuracy or the, uh, or the uh, range of that device uh, that will affect the measurement. But Chroma's added to our uh, list of options for the power meter, uh, a very great ultra high precision DCCT, which is a DC current transformer. Uh, the nice thing about it is it, it's referred to as DCCT because it does supply DC uh, uh, current as well as AC current, but yeah, you can also measure AC current with these. And we've given two variations in this, a 60 amp and a 200 amp device. We also uh, include with that uh, another device, the A662019, which is the power adapter that goes with it. Uh, with this, you still get very good accuracy, much more than you would get with a standard shunt or with a, uh, a standard CT. So uh, we offer this as an option with our unit. So if, you, if you're looking for great measurements higher than our uh, 20 amp or 30 amp uh, devices that are the internal shunt for our power meters, uh, you know, take a look at these various options. I've enlisted the three, three different part numbers for those options. When you're using external current transformers uh, internally to the digital power meter, there's configuration settings. You can set it uh, ratio of the current transformer, uh, which is basically the turns ratio of the current transformer. And those can range anywhere from 1.0 all the way to 999.9. .9. Uh, external shunts, uh, they're defined by resistance. Uh, again, they can go from 0 0.001 milliohms. That's, we're talking about 100 nanoohms, which is kind of incredible. Uh, and all the way up to 99.999 ohms. So uh, this is an incredible wide range that you can program into the power meter on the configuration setting when you're using an external shunt, external CT. There's also uh, a connection externally for the shunts on the back of the unit and the CTs will go uh, right across the actual uh, current inputs on the device. And then there's our four channel and three channel version of this unit, which uh, the digital power meter has, the 66203 has three channels, 66204 has four channels. Makes for a the perfect device for any type of uh, testing of a complete test of your uh, of your power conversion device, whatever it might be, whether it's a power supply or a inverter or even a, a motor controller or very, uh, just about any device out there. So uh, I put up one slide here. Uh, this shows that with the four channel unit, you can measure the three phase output of a PV inverter. And you can also measure the DC input power from the solar panel when you're doing your UUT test of a PV inverter. And this gives you not only each individual measurement, but it also gives you efficiency overall. And that's also displayed on the front of the unit. 
It also gives you a lot of configurations uh, that you can use it for. You can use it for four individual single phase units for multiple testing of devices. You can also do a, what's referred to as a three wire single phase, which is I refer to as a split phase. A lot of people understand it as that. It's basically a 220 or 240 volt uh, with a neutral between the two lines and that gives you uh, basically two 120 volt uh, uh, outputs uh, with respect to neutral. And you can do that with two channels. You can also still have two available channels left over to do single phase two wire. You can do three phase uh, three wire, which is for a delta uh, measurement, uh, AC delta measurements. And you can do three phase four wire, which will give you uh, measurements for a, a Y type input or three phase four wire. So great, great product. Uh, a lot of these in the field, uh, we use them here internally in our automated test systems. Uh, I use them to uh, do verification on a lot of my demonstration products uh, between, the, between calibration. I'll, I'll use actually uh, one of these meters to, to just do a verification test as well. So a uh, great product. Uh, please uh, give us a, a call or go on chat. Uh, let us know if there's any information we can give you more detail on. Then the software that we that we talked about briefly. Uh, this is a, this is a great software package. Uh, it gives you a multitude of measurements. Every measurement that this unit will make, you can display it. Uh, you uh, each of these six displays uh, across the top here uh, can be configured for any one of the 25 different or 24 different measurements that we can make with this unit. Uh, it also gives you, when you're in three-phase mode, the measure uh, in multi-channel mode, the ability to measure multiple channels. Uh, you can also set it up for various testing, such as surge current. You can also do just settings for uh, uh, pass/fail settings for voltage current, uh, peak current, peak voltage. Uh, you can do it for uh, TD uh, total harmonic distortion. Uh, very, uh, any of the different types of powers, whether it's reactive, uh, true power, or, or uh, apparent power, you'll be able to do that. The other great thing about it is it actually displays voltage and current while you're doing the measurements in real time. And the nice thing about that is uh, you can understand when you start seeing things pop up on your measurements, such as harmonic distortion or crest factor or power factor, uh, here you can physically see what effect that is. Uh, you can see the voltage with respect to the current and uh, as you can compare it here to an actual oscilloscope screenshot uh, of that measurement, you can see that it accurately displays that information for you. The other thing about the soft panel is uh, harmonic distortion measurements. We talked about it briefly, but here you can do two things. You can, number one, you can see that I can display voltage and current. So I can physically see what the distortion looks like and who is getting the most distortion. Here you can see the voltage waveform in the blue is, is basically very clean, but the current harmonic distortion you can see is highly exaggerated on this device. Uh, and also we can graphically display that information at each individual harmonic. We can compare it to the requirements of IEC 61000-3-2. You can capture this data to a report, even capture the data for uh, doing a plot of the graphics uh, in Excel. So again, uh, it's a great tool. I use it on all my products. If I'm testing an AC source or a DC source, an AC load, DC load, uh, when I'm doing demonstrations for customers, I always have one of these power meters connected. Uh, it's, uh, it's perfect for integrating into a system uh, for a complete uh, turnkey automated test system. And Chroma can do that for you. We've got some great software, great people here to help you. So please uh, stay online, uh, send, your, uh, send your messages in. Our chat room will uh, people start trying to help you out with that. If there's anything we can't cover right now, uh, feel free to email us and uh, let us know and we'll definitely uh, get that information to you. 
Uh, you can reach us uh, at sales at chromausa.com. We have regional sales managers all over the country that can help you and support you. Uh, and I'm here in California. My actual email address is Larry S at chromausa.com. And uh, please ignore that photograph. I don't know why they stuck that in there, but <laughs> but anyway. Uh, so if you have any questions, feel free to reach out to us. Uh, we'd love to hear from you. Uh, you can call us. You can reach out to uh, through our phone number, 949-600-6400. Uh, you can reach us on our website, chromausa.com, and uh, of course, through our sales group, or you can go directly to uh, Apps Engineering and uh, look me up, Larry S. at chromausa.com. Thank you so much. It's been a real pleasure. Uh, this has been one of our shorter webinars because we concentrated on one device. In the past, we, we kind of grouped more devices together and gave a wider range uh, in the future, we're going to be doing more of these, so please uh, keep in touch with us. You'll see these posted on our, our website. Uh, you'll also uh, can contact any of our uh, regional salespeople or internal salespeople. They'll be able to uh, let you know when the next one's going to be happening. We're doing these every Thursday, uh, and we're going to be doing these for a while. We enjoy doing it. We enjoy hearing from you and getting your feedback also so that we can better support our customers. And uh, one more thing I'd like to say to all of you is that uh, I, I have to admit one of my biggest joys is hearing from the customers. Uh, we've got an incredible wide range of customers that we support and uh, you guys are doing a great job out there. Uh, some incredible products that you've developed and uh, and I've learned a lot more from you than I'm sure you've learned from me. But uh, uh, just hearing from you, uh, discussing what your product is, what we can do to help you and support you uh, is has been uh, one of my uh, favorite things that I can do as an applications engineer. So best wishes to all of you. Uh, hope and prayers go out to everyone that you'll be safe, uh, stay healthy, and uh, and keep uh, keep in contact. Uh, look out for our next webinar uh, next Thursday. Uh, it's going to be uh, related to uh, safety testing again. So got a great young guy that's going to be helping you out with that one, and uh, look forward to it. So I'm going to stay online. Uh, this actually is a one-hour session, uh, but uh, I'm going to keep the chat room going. And uh, feel free uh, to log in, type in your uh, questions, and, uh, and we'll love to be able to help you out. Uh, I see that uh, a lot of you are still there, and I really appreciate that. Uh, you guys have uh, stayed wet throughout the entire uh, presentation. Um, I'd love to hear your feedback. You know, if there's something missing, let me know. If there's some more detail you'd like to know about, please, please tell us. Um, if there's a, a subject that we haven't covered in the past uh, eight of our uh, past eight uh, webinars, you know, feel free to, to let us know and uh, we'll be happy to look into doing one specific to your needs and requirements. The other thing that we do here at Chroma is uh, we have people in the field that can support, but we also do live web demonstrations of the equipment. Uh, I can set up a web de a demonstration and show you how the product works. Matter of fact, um, I actually have my power meter running behind me here. And uh, I'll show you what that looks like. I've got the soft panel running. So I'm going to slide this over. And here you get to see an actual unit and run that I'm presently running a test on. So in between doing these webinars, I, I still do support customers and uh, uh, we do testing for them uh, from time to time as well for to demonstrate our products capabilities. So here I've got a small unit running uh, and you can see the voltage and the current. Um, I've injected harmonic distortion using our AC source for this one. So the voltage is actually distorted. And then the, the, uh, the current is actually fed through a resistive load. So uh, the current and voltage are, are 
uh, not phase shifted at all. It's uh, going through resistive load. But we wanted to demonstrate the capability of our AC sources uh, to this customer. So that's what I'm running right now is in, and we're doing various types of uh, uh, voltage and current uh, distortion to show them what we're capable of doing with our AC sources. But the power meter is a great tool to identify that. So I use my power meter to um, and an oscilloscope also to show them that we can accurately measure it, we can accurately display it, we can generate it from our AC source and from all of that information they can do some great testing of their devices uh, to see the susceptibility of their device with respect to harmonic distortion. So I kind of hope that helps uh, understand uh, the process, uh, gives you a live, uh, a live view of the uh, actual device while it's running. Uh, if we jump into uh, the harmonic measurements of this device and I'll run the test, you'll notice it's failing. <laughs> and uh, that's because I forced a failure on this unit by injecting the harmonic distortion above the levels required. And so you can see graphically displays it. It displays the first, second, all the way. Right now, this customer only needs it up to the 40th harmonic. Uh, we can measure all the way up to the 50th harmonic graphically. And, uh, and with raw data, we can go all the way up to the 100th harmonic. Here you can see across the top, we've got all these different measurements that are going on. Uh, I can change any one of these. Uh, let's see if I wanted to take uh, wattage and uh, I want to measure the reactive power of this device. Uh, reactive power is very low on this unit because it's uh, pretty much a uh, resistive load. I can go in and change uh, to uh, total harmonic distortion and current. We can also go in and do uh, a variety of uh, uh, measurements for peak. This is a peak minus. This is the peak positive. So any one of these six displays up here can be re, uh, reconfigured for any one of these types of measurements that we can make with our device. Uh, we can do ampere hour readings. We can do uh, everything uh, regarding, uh, and with ampere hour errors, I have to go back and start the measurement for time. But then you've got uh, a, an incredible amount of things you can do with this unit. They did a great job on our, um, on our soft panel uh, and it's uh, something that a lot of customers use. It's a, it's a great benchtop test, uh, software package, a general user interface. And then when we go deeper into automating our test system, you can use our uh, great Power Pro. It's a proprietary software system uh, integration uh, software package that's used for uh, all of our equipment, including even other people's equipment. Uh, so if there's devices that Chroma doesn't make, like an oscilloscope, uh, we can incorporate that into that and use it with our software. So keep, uh, keep the questions coming. I see a lot of questions still popping up. Uh, I appreciate you guys staying on board. And it uh, looks like... Uh, Looks like our online people are, are helping you out, uh, Christian and Julian. Uh, appreciate your help with this. So I'm going to keep this up and keep it running for a little longer for you, and uh, we'll keep it going. Uh, another thing we can do with this uh, software is record data. So when we go into the recording of data, you'll notice it has the ability to both plot and show statistical information. And here's all the different, uh, you can do CPK data uh, with the uh, lower and higher level. And you can do that for, again, all the measurements this unit can make. It can do it uh, down to a one second interval. When we say one second, that means all 24 measurements can be made in one second. And you can record it up to 10,000 hours and uh, store it to a, uh, a text file. Again, it gives you the ability to plot the data as well as store the data statistically. Um, so again, if there's anything that we can do to, to help you out, let us know. I'm, uh, I'm looking at our chat room. It looks like we're slowing down a little bit on questions. And 
and uh, here we go. Nope, still getting more questions in there. Great. Thank you all uh, for, for joining and thank you for uh, getting this information uh, out to us on the chat room. Uh, again, we, we'll be more than happy to answer your questions as best we can live. Uh, if there's anything uh, left over at the end or if you want to keep sending information to us, please uh, go to our website or you can reach me on Larry S at chromausa.com uh, and we'll be happy to answer your questions for you. So, uh, again, it looks like um, we, well, no, we're still getting, still getting some questions coming in. Great. Very good. All right. I'll leave it up a little bit longer. Uh, looks like the uh, the chat room is uh, kind of uh, slowing down. Uh, so uh, we'll leave it on for a few more, uh, five more minutes. And uh, at that point, then we'll, we'll discontinue and shut this one down for you. We're also record this, uh, so we'll be able to make this uh, a recorded uh, webinar available to you. We also offer the, uh, the presentation itself in a PDF file. If you need that, want to view that, we'll be happy to send that to you also. Uh, again, my name is Larry Sharp, um, and I, uh, it's been a pleasure uh, sharing information with all of you. And uh, again, uh, thank you for being such great customers. And uh, I've learned more and more from you than I could have ever imagined. Um, I recently spoke to a young engineer and I, I even told him, I said, you know, it's amazing how much growth there is in understanding when you're opened up to so many different industries uh, related to power and so many different great companies out there that are that are doing an incredible work uh, creating and producing and developing uh, technologies that we I wouldn't have thought of when I was a young engineer. <laughs> and I'm not a young engineer anymore. So, so uh, again, great talking to everyone. And uh, please keep, uh, keep us in mind and uh, feel free to send us more information online. Uh, through emails, uh, give us a call, or reach out to uh, any of our regional sales managers. And at this point, I think we're going to sign off. It looks like uh, the chat room is pretty quiet. I uh, haven't seen anything uh, come up recently. So we will be getting uh, more of these uh, webinars uh, put together for you and uh, look forward to seeing you all again on the next one. Take care. Goodbye.